Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave, another faceless uh, weekend as it's going to be as I'm away from my traditional setup. So I do want to wish you well, but I do want to apologize for the uh, terrible sound quality. I do understand that it's pretty, uh, pretty not optimal. I'm going to be working on that. But of course, just for a couple days here and then it's back to the beast setup. And uh, of course, because it is a Saturday, well, not all that much going on. But hey, there is there's a few things to talk about, a few trade ideas coming up uh, likely in the next couple of days, I'd imagine. And with that said, as always, want to be wish you the best the best, the happiest of the happiest, and uh, let's get into the live scene right here, right now, as the teleportation has been initiated. There we go. Bitcoin, once again, in all of its glory. As you can see, let me just make sure that I'm still recording, and screen over here is working. Okay, good. Okay, awesome. Great. There we go. And uh, and as you can see, Bitcoin actually having a pretty damn good uh, close on the daily. We did hit the target that we spoke about yesterday night at the uh, at the 8200 ish level. Well, I mean, 8188 uh, spot 87 on stamp. Close enough is close enough. Again, I don't see these, say these numbers to be 100% exact. I see them to get around the ballpark. And uh, yesterday, when we, when we were trading right around 79.50, or 7900 in the morning well that was you know a nice nice two hundred dollar move so <laughs> there you go uh overall uh bitcoin just looking constructive on the higher time frames we have the daily right here still above all major moving averages with the golden cross on the way again the divergence between all these major moving averages here you do see all of them pretty much splayed out the 200 exponential is kind of the last one to migrate above the signal of the blue 377 exponential moving average if and when that does happen that's going to be you know just setting the more long-term trend at you know to the upside of course uh, building up major supports within this region and this region right here the 5400 to 5500 level is a massive base from a bullish perspective as long as bitcoin remains above there everything is you know more or less all well and good doesn't mean that bitcoin can't have another you know massive retracement down in fact i think that that's quite likely uh, over the next couple months um, but for right now, you know, I would say that uh, as long as we're above that, I wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't be enticing like any sort of bear, bear, like delusional bear targets to, you know, prior lows or even new lows. Now, if we do break this area, then yes, then the conversation of moving back down to the prior lows or, or at the very least 4200 becomes an extreme likelihood. Um, but for right here, right now, uh, Bitcoin consolidating above not just this level, but also a major, uh, you know, a major level from let's go in the three day perspective. So I just want to show this very quickly and let me actually take these guys off again we do see this white turn and simple moon average bitcoin consolidating above this uh you know above this actually having a very good close yesterday night at uh, at 8 p.m eastern time on the three to double time frame and to me this is you know consolidation above a major support which builds up the general case kind of back testing this a little bit we do see that the white turn and simple moon average from a three-day perspective has been a get uh, has, has been a damn good gatekeeper for generally bullish and generally bearish activities you know for a market phase you can see that we when we lost it over here generally bad you know, send, send back down to your red dildo capitulation death. Uh, then we once we get it right over here, glory times to 20,000. You know, this was when Bitcoin was like $350. So again, a big deal to me that we've uh, been able to both open and close, not just one, but now two three-day deals above this area. Let's go see what the oscillators are saying though. We've been watching the three-day uh, jewel and that's been the big one for me. And the three-day jewel is actually pointed down right now. And so we actually have confirmed this to the, to, to the downside, which does make me very apprehensive in this region. So here's the next thing. If you do have access to, to the jewel and you are watching this and you, and you are looking for like the more long-term play, I would say that uh, the next big play is going gonna, is gonna to be when we see this light blue cross to the downside of this pink. Now, I do feel like it's still a little bit premature to be front running the signal here. However, usually when I do get a, usually when I do get a uh, you know a negative slope like this, it does uh, you know open up the possibility for a nice move to the downside. In fact, the last time that we got one right over here was about a 10 to 11 percent drop down, and we actually got even a little bit higher on this last drive. Although I'm still very apprehensive about it, I, like I said, I won't. Uh, I, I myself will not be taking the signal. I will only take the signal if we actually uh, crack the pink right here as you can see for right now we're still kind of well and far away from that and i do think that it's still very 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 possible that bitcoin gets picked up and we can see the light blue walked into the more critical zone as we've seen in the past right over here what is the significance of that why does that even matter well because when when we do see a setup like that that is when those very nasty retracements do happen uh, so if we do kind of back test this a little bit 
you know, I've done this a million times, so I don't want to bore people with this, but uh, you know, when you do see the light blue, also to get very, very deep into this region, let me just make sure that uh, you can see the full screen. There we go, okay, good. Um, and uh, and then if the signal's red in the background, then we get a negative slope on the light blue. The, these are where a very nasty 30 to 40%, and in, in some cases even more than that, drops have been called off. I don't want to go through like the full rigmarole, because you know, again, we've done this a million times, but right over here you have like, what, about a 40% about a move. Right over here you have, you know, you know another, a 35% move, you know, you get the idea. And we and, and if and if you'd like, you know, more back testing, go to the prior videos. This is going to go into more detail. There you go. Three three cases of you know 30 plus uh, percent to the downside. Yes, there have been cases of more like 60 to 7 percent, but those are coming off of parabolic drives to begin with, which I do not think. Well, I mean, like we are kind of parabolic here, but uh, not in the way that it was before on those all those prize examples. So what I'd still be cognizant of is if the light blue gets. Cr uh, walked up in this more critical region where those where those last ones were that's where i start to look for the 30 to 40 percent drop down if we were to if we were to reverse right here i actually don't think that we get it i don't think that we'd retrace all like as much as uh, as as those prior signals would expect um but kind of zooming right out if we were to play about 10 you know if 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 we do kind of take the mean of what the current area is uh, it would be about a 10 to 12 percent drop, and where that put us at, that actually put us at right on the right on the white 200 simple moon average right here. So if we were to have a pullback, I do think that it actually probably does take a stab at that 71 to 7200 ish region, which is confluent with CMEs over here. So I do like the confluence between these two. Um, and if we go down to an hourly, you can see that uh, yeah, we still do have this massive gap right over here. So at some point in time, this will be filled, um, and that is again 7200 ish, uh, 7200 ish. So I do like confluences with that you know the met, uh, measured move also uh, you know in, uh, you know an average of what we typically see on the jewel and also a major moving average and also the gap on CME so you know a lot of technicals want, kind of line it up for that Mo most importantly I would just be saying that I'd be looking to be a buyer there I wouldn't necessarily like just blindly take a short in this current area the CME's had a very good close on on Friday uh, this is you know for all intents and purposes an ascending triangle everyone their fucking mother knows that we're not saying anything crazy here and I don't want to say you know, I don't want to sound like this is brown, brown, groundbreaking news. Uh, the groundbreaking news is going to be if we do one of two things. If we break below 7,200, I'm going to get very, very bearish for move down to the low 6,000s. Uh, and actually, and, and not even really there. I mean, it really it's probably come down to, uh, you know, maybe you know maybe mid five thousands to test that critical area that we spoke about before by the same token this is technically a more bullish pattern statistically speaking it's going to break out to the upside more than the downside um however in cryptocurrency land well <laughs> patterns <laughs> patterns have an interesting way of behaving um and uh and if we do break above about 8200 8250 on a higher time frame then yes i do think that we you know we'd probably make our way well into the 9000s probably 9500 give or take a few bucks um again a lot of people looking at a move like that so typically when you do get a move like that it either gets front ran or or it overshoots to you know <laughs> basically wreck all the geniuses but if we go back on over here into spot charts and kind of zoom this this bitch out a little bit and if we do put on our beautiful volume profile you will notice that uh both these targets confluent with you know with the volume profile if we kind of just zoom it out a little bit more we do see this higher value note or sorry the the edge of the higher value node area right here right around this 9500 ish level it is confluent again with the measure move off the ascending triangle and then also so if we were to kind of head back down, we do see you know major activity being done around that 6,300-ish, 6,400-ish level. So those would be the two tentative areas. This is a trade that would you know it would be you know thousand dollar plus trade, right? So I'm happy to wait for an actual signal for this. Um, in fact, I can't even get on my Druid account on this computer. Or at least I have to remember <laughs> what my password is, which is fucking impossible. Um, so overall, uh, that's kind of what I'd be saying for the actual, you know, the actual higher time frame breakout perspective. Right now, we're still just consolidating. We do see, um, we do see, we do see the historical volatility percentile still suggest that we are doing just that consolidation, but it is getting extremely low now. So that means that price action is getting more and more and more and more and more and more and more likely to break, likely to explode, more like um, as time ticks on. With each and every passing moment, it becomes more and more likely that uh, this mean 
reverting the loss sweater is going to go absolutely fucking crazy and that's going to you know be the impetus uh, for actually timing a breakout out of this range so again if I'm looking for trades I'm looking for trades below about 71 71.50 and trades above 8200 on on higher time frames lower time frames have to be a little more conservative maybe like a four hour total close above 8300 would be good enough for me and a four hour total close below 6950 would be good enough for me uh, for both those for uh, for both those sides but right now you know it's all the lower time frames right so let's actually just take this off and I do think that lower time frames probably do want to come back down into this region it does look to me like we want to have a little bit of a pullback here uh, looking at the well looking at the hourly maybe I am wrong on that let's go to a four hour you know to me if we were if we we're gonna break out of this I do believe that we would have done it uh, last night um, without having a little bit of a pullback again pullback you know not a death sense or anything like that just you know tells us that we're likely to spend a little bit more time within this region I'm trying to go over the all the officers here and just figure out what exactly our setup is yeah, we do see two hour stokes headed down this is your three hour right here headed down as well four hour still headed up but getting weaker eight hour mm, fresh cross up so I do like that ten hour gonna have a fresh cross out imagine as well yes twelve hour mm, technically down right now but did we get the daily to cross up yesterday we did however they are weak right here so it's going to depend on this next tick uh, really what really what the bulls want to see is they do not want to lose basically just even the low of yesterday's uh, daily dildo at 7800 bucks if we lose the low of yesterday at 7800 dollars and yes I do think that this retracement does get a little bit more done to the downside but uh, looking at the 12 hour here we do have support right around 7900 so I would imagine that uh, this area would be defended if, if, if Bitcoin does get down to around 7,900, probably does have a nice little scout bounce. Um, and I do think that lower time frames are kind of lining up with a move down there. Uh, you could technically say that this is a very, a very short term head and shoulders, technically does work as one. Let's see what the measurement would be. Although, you know, head and shoulders in Bitcoin land is, uh, is usually, it's actually a bullish pattern sometimes, funnily enough. And that'd be pointing us down towards around 7,850, 7,900 ish areas. So it would be conflict with that area that we just spoke about. Um, so I do like that, but uh, hey, here's the thing. You know, I'd rather be agnostic in this range to be very, very clear. Medium to higher time frames, all bullish. Lower time frames, a little bit droopy here. Um, and I do think that uh, we'll have to kind of check on the other majors. But if I was just looking at Bitcoin, I'd say mm, probably do have another sweep of like 7,900, and then we'll see if we bounce there. If we fail to bounce there, then uh, next level is going to be about 7,750-ish area. Should line up with the 12-hour 21. This one's this one's been walking us up the whole way through. We do see, sorry, the 12-hour the 12 yellow 21 expansion moon average right here. Uh, coming in, yeah, right around 7,700 and going to be rising over time. So as long as Bitcoin holds this one, I would say that the overall formation of this being a bullish reaccumulation pattern is intact. Um, if we do take out the high of yesterday at 8188 spot 87, I would immediately be looking for a full-on test of 8300. Um, you know what? What is this area about? Yeah, about 8300, maybe even 8350, uh, and it would it would greatly increase the probability that we actually break it to the upside. Um, but for right now, you know, it does feel like a little bit, a uh, little bit of droopiness. But again, this is a weekend. I don't feel all that confident on the lower time frames. What I can say from a medium time frame perspective is is exactly what I just said right there. If we take out, um, <clears throat> if we take out, if we take out like 79.35 to the downside, I would be looking for a move towards uh, 79. Well, that's not very helpful. It's like wow, 30. 30 fucking dollars down crown great great call uh yeah I get, you know i get that it's 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 i'm, I'm i guess i'm just kind of showing that there's really also not that much not that much to be done right now the big the big play is going to be the breakout obviously um but if we do get to take out the upside of this one again 81 88 then yes i would be looking for about 100 150 dollar move for the upside and potential to break too to the upside which obviously would open up the floodgates for a move about a thousand plus dollars higher so again um a little bit of patience here is going to go a long way. I'm, I'm, I'm not really in any real positions. I'm still holding my account. Jesus, my, there goes my voice. Still holding my account balance in um, in Bitcoin. So, you know, I'm, I'm technically long in a way, I suppose. But uh, I'm not like, I'm not in active trades to the long side. Um, I would only do that if we break to the upside. 
um, here. Anyways, uh, like I said, if we do, you know, if we did get this low, then yeah, probably 50 bucks lower to support. Um, does does kind of imply that we will come all the way down to about 77.50 likely. Um, so again, 77.50 would be, you know, uh, well, you know what? Yeah, let's, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I, I can make that call. Uh, I think that's a fair call to make. Um, if we do take out 70, if we take out 7900 to the downside, we will see uh, 77.50, 7700 a share of that. And I'd be looking for a big bounce there, and then you know, see if, as long as we hold this yellow 21. Uh, I would say that definitely this is a bullish reaccumulation pattern. I mean, I think that that's quite obvious. The whole way through, volume signature is confirming this as well. You see the nice orderly drop off in volume here. Usually a good sign that we're in a nice, uh, nice consolidation. This one, obviously, angle to the upside, so that it would have an upside bias here. But uh, I do want to be very careful in how I say that because overall, we are in a holiday weekend. Is it likely to break right now or not? I'd say. Mm, it is getting pretty, uh, overall, it's getting pretty likely to break just because we are getting near the apex of this triangle, right? Uh, this triangle would have an apex somewhere around the beginning of June, which means that it's going to be pretty damn full within the next day or two, actually. It's, we're now on the 25th day of May. I would say anywhere around here, which is like the 26, 27, 28, is where it becomes statistically extremely likely to break, uh, you know, what once it gets about this full. Um, so, again, perhaps a little bit more waiting which does certainly offer up the potential for another, you know, another test of the supports. Um, if we are looking at the, if we are looking at the 12 hour here, we do see that actually would be best represented like this on our bottom support trend line, and uh, top one would actually just be quite simply a horizontal right around 8200. If 8200 is closed above on a 12 hour double time frame, yes, I do consider that a break. In fact, like I said, I would actually feel, I'd actually feel pretty comfortable even just playing that if we took out the high of our last 12 hour double. 81 90 94 I think that would be good enough for me um, so overall you know if, if if I were looking for downside I could make that call below 7500 although it would be quite um, that would be certainly uh, quite aggressive on my part but uh, from this perspective it actually could work and it is confluent also with this measure move sorry um, sorry it's it's confluent with just looking at this as a structure as, as long as we kind of maintain that area we do have the right the nice rising bottoms as you can see but uh, overall I want to be very very forward when I when I don't feel all that um, you know when, when, when it's probably just a better time to be waiting right now, man. We're on a holiday weekend. Uh, America's going to be on a holiday for Memorial Day on um, on on Monday, so I know that's not like a world holiday, but America does you know do, does have the professional exchanges like the CMEs, GBDC. So you know a lot of a lot of traders are not going to be at home. Uh, it does offer up the potential for fuckery, of course, but uh, still, I would you know I. It's, it's pro probably time to just be a watcher mo more than anything. Um, going over here to the, I, I forgot to check on the two day. I think that we just got a new tick on the two day last night. Two day looks very good to me. Two day looks bullish. If I had, you know, if I had to pick directions here, I am bullish. Um, overall, as far as the higher structure goes, it's the lower time frames which say, ah, yeah, maybe we have a little bit of a pullback down to 79, maybe even 77 and a half. But uh, I would be looking for bounces there. Uh, two day still is going to be crossed back up to the upside, although quite weak. We have held this trend line, uh, the same trend line ever since. Hey, you goddamn bastard. It's over here. Uh, ever since uh, uh, mid-March, so again, bouncing off this area. As long as we hold that, I do think that this, you know, once again, does look constructive to me. Um, we do see two-day RSI. You know, it's, it's going to create uh, great bearish divergence at some point, but not anytime soon, in fact. We have to, you know, we have to first make a higher high and then put in a local high, and that's, you know, that's 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 days away. But because we went so high in the last drive, it does offer, offer up the potential for a massive, massive uh, divergence play um, probably in the next uh, month or so. Um, did we look at the three day already? I think we did. Uh, three day soaks actually headed further south now. So a little, uh, again, a little bit more of a bearish signal here. Um, but as far as the three day goes, I can't get bearish really until we actually like, I can't look at like big bearish, right? You know, of course you can look for like $500 move to the downside, but when we're talking about big boy moves, like thousand dollar plus, I can't get bearish until we actually break the three day 200 simple to the downside. And at that point, yes, I would get, you know, quite bearish for a move down to the low 6,000s and uh, mid to high 5,000s actually, it's, you know, it's going to be, I'd imagine that that would be <laughs> pretty interpreted pretty badly by the market. But I, again, I have to, I have to be very clear in stating this. I'm not bearish right now. I am bullish. I've been bullish for a while and I'd still be bullish. Uh, going over here to the weekly, 
um, weekly. Again, had a very good close last week. And uh, from a troll under band's perspective, which will be closing tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern time, we are still hovering above the top troll under band right here. And that to me is saying that it's more likely that we get continuation before anything else. Uh, we also had a bullish a bullish switch up of all of these moving, well, most of these moving averages here, the green 55, the cyan 89. And we're going to likely see the the yellow 21 migrate above both those. So lower periods trend above higher periods. The overall, you know, trend is strengthening to the upside, of course. As it uh, gets a little bit lighter outside, it's uh, 8.30 a.m. 830, uh, 830 here, so a little bit early, early for me as well. So do you apologize for my struggling speech. Uh, but overall, you know, this to me would look like continuation until it's not, until we actually close a weekly a weekly dildo below the top trollinger band, which is currently at 76.50ish uh, 76, uh, 76 area. Um, you know, from a trolling band perspective, trend is trend is very likely to continue um, until not. You know, just like when you saw it trending outside the bottom, you know, right here or above, right over here. Those are very strong trends, and you can see very easily from a weekly perspective that uh, if it does want to break this area, there ain't nothing stopping you from you know 95, 10, 95, 100, 10, a share. So again, you know, my 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 biggest gripe with that target is that there's too many people, too many people talking about it really. Um, but then again, it becomes like a fucking meme when everyone's like talking about the same thing. You know, I'm sure that if you ask, if you ask the bulls, they're they're gonna tell you everyone's bearish. If you ask the bears, everyone's they're gonna tell you everyone's bullish. Well, you know, it's it's one of those things. We kind of get stuck on our own echo uh, echo chambers, right? Looking at longs and shorts, we do see them coming in more and more to parity. Actually, longs adding, or sorry, not longs, but shorts adding significant positions while longs taking off a few. Uh, we do have them coming, you know, closer and closer. Uh, and, the, and this, you know, this this while once was went, uh, sorry, while before when the disparity was pretty massive, I would say was a you know what was certainly a, a bear signal. Um, now is certainly dissipated, and I would say that that is not the case anymore. This is pretty, this is pretty stock standard, um, and, uh, and overall, you know, when we're looking at the longs, I mean, the longs are not high. Longs being high would be like well above thirty thousand, like thirty-five thousand plus to forty thousand. Uh, right now, we're literally at twenty, a little bit below twenty-three thousand open longs and nineteen thousand open shorts, about which neither are high. So, to me, it's kind of a non-event. I don't really put too much weight on this to begin with. Um, but uh, it's fun to look at and ju uh, just like the crypto fear and greed index which is uh, 69 right now which kind of does to me looks like it's come down you know it's come down a little bit we were when we're when we're around an 80 read right over here that's certainly toppy people getting a little bit too optimistic um, when we come down into like the low 60s as we just did does allow it to kind of reset but overall the range from this perspective I would say is between a 40 and 80 in this um, in this phase of the market cycle so uh, so that's what I have to say about that I um, mean, we're kind of like, you know, still right in the middle, so a little bit more towards the top side of that, right? So, yeah, um, let's see what else we want to talk about. We haven't looked at the monthly in a while, but I just, I do want to spend a second on the monthly just uh, uh, while we're here. Um, we do see that, you know, monthly monthly authors are, are, are looking good to me, and this is why I am just uh, still generally bullish. Even if we did have a pullback down to like the low 6,000, that would be a major buy for me, and I will be buy, I will be scaling in my actual trading account once again, uh, if and when we do do, do that. Uh, monthly stokes back up and erect. They did do a decent enough job of calling the low in 2015, 2016. Remember, we are talking about monthly ranges here, so you know it's it's you know monthly range is like multiple that multi thousand dollars. Uh, monthly RSI going to be taking out the exponential likely in the next five days confirmed, and so uh, that's going to be a big deal to me. If we come back down and test that exponential, I'm going to be a, a major buyer on that as well. Um, for both long-term hodls and just and just trading positions, uh, and overall, you know, you do see again just a beautiful, beautiful execution of what we've been speaking about for a long time. With you know the monthly first taking out the fifty, then rallying a thousand dollars, or sorry, even more than a thousand bucks over to 5500 about a couple thousand dollars and then taking out the 21 and then rallying up another another few thousand dollars so again these higher time frames really do help uh, keep keep my head cool so it might be it might be uh, worthwhile for you as well um, if you find yourself kind of getting stuck in the crack trader time frames anything below like a four hours is a crack trader time frame in my opinion but hey don't don't let my limitations be yours in traditional markets I pretty much only traded low time frames uh, you know I made my living trading a five minute and a 15 minute you know in both uh, in, in traditional markets as a market maker and then later on in forex but uh in cryptocurrencies i just don't think it's very viable um, i think that you're asking for a massive uh, girthy multicolored dildo up your bunghole and uh no lube so that's really going to be pretty not fun so overall 
you know, looking at this uh, again, just kind of wrap up my thoughts here. Very low time frames. Yeah, probably does have a pullback. Um, you know, I, I think 79.50 quite likely. Uh, maybe even maybe even like 78.50 ish area. Uh, I'm not too concerned about that. The higher time frames are still certainly bullish, and I would say that they are they are very bullish as long as we maintain above this like, you know, let's just we could even say like 7300. Or so, I mean, if you want to be super conservative, say 7,200, but uh, I'd say I'd be comfortable saying like 73 or 7,400 actually. Um, you know, it maintains an overall bullish posturing, but it, you know, it's going to take its time going sideways. And uh, like we have looked at the historic volatility percentile saying, hey, we're going to have a move extremely soon, uh, relatively speaking. When we're, when we're looking at four weeks of price action or three weeks of price action, extremely soon is going to be within you know, the next, I'd say, two to four days. Uh, very, very likely. Very, very likely that we get a massive move. Um, okay, what else do we want to look at? Let's go look at the other top shit coins. They've been, you know, and I'd actually be comfortable with saying that, uh, I'd be comfortable with, with making the call based off the other ones. And yes, Mr. Buter all over here, finding sell pressure um, right at the area that we spoke about yesterday, right around 255. How high did it get actually? Got up to about 256. So yeah, about cl close enough is close enough for me. Uh, Mr. Buter all, uh, lots of weeks to the upside right here on the lower time frame. I do think that it comes back down and tests like uh, 248 probably. Um, but of course, higher time frames, all good. I mean, I don't have any problem with the higher time frames. These are these are good. This is good. We 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 closed yesterday above the red ten symbol, I believe. We confirm. Yep, by four cents. But hey, good enough is good enough. And uh, we do see daily Stokes probably had oh not headed back up to the upside. Okay, all right. Um, so yeah, we are kind of at a crossroads here, I suppose, then, because I do want to see continuation sooner rather than later. Yes, and the 12 hour kind of reveals all. So as long as we maintain above 246.5, I do think that this one does get picked up. Any pullback uh, in this is likely to get bought. Um, however, if we do lose 246.5 and, and not even just like close below it, just tick below it, then I do think that we have first, uh, first a very quick move down to 240. But you know, and then we'll kind of, then we'll kind of figure it out from there. But uh, I would still give the nod to the bulls here. This does look like a bull flag to me. I think that's fine. And as long as we hold this red ten simple, I, you know, I do think that you know this area gets bought and we do move higher back towards 265 to, or sorry, 260, 260 to 265 region. Uh, we can nail it down a little bit more. Maybe like 261 to 264. We'll call. It. Um, overall, it is a bull flag, so we can make a mesh move on it, and I've already gone ahead and done that. And it's pointed much higher towards, uh, the, I believe, the 330 level. Yeah, right around here, which should be confluent with our volume profile as well, which you do see that's kind of like the edge of the, whoops, let's pull it out a little bit more. There we go. It's, it is kind of like the edge of these higher value nodes here. So I do like confluence is there, um, putting it back in, get back in there, you dirty volume profile. We have the golden cross on, uh, on daily. Or we've had a golden cross. On, we've had a golden cross on the daily for a while. My rule is, as long as you're above the 21, I am certainly not bearish, and I mean more importantly, I'm bullish. So I would be bullish on this, and I do think that uh, we probably do have that. We probably actually do hit that move. Um, uh, and I'd say, you know, I'd be overall bullish on Mr. Biro as long as he holds this 239 region from a from a long-term structural perspective. So weekly is looking good to me as well. Just kind of balanced out these moving averages. Overall, again, it's it's similar to Bitcoin. You know, yeah, we might have a small pullback in the lower time frames, but I do believe that it gets bought. Um, so a small pullback for Mr. Biro would be somewhere right around like 248 maybe. Um, let's go check out Mrs. Likewin. What's this beautiful bitch doing? How you doing, you gorgeous lady? Um, probably gonna have some bearish divergence here on the hourly. Yes, we do. Probably does come back down and tag hundred dollars, I'd imagine. But uh, we got the move that we were looking for yesterday. Very, 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 very powerful, Mrs. Likewin. Uh, overall, I do think that this is, um, you know, this is constructive in nature. This is likely to take another leg up, and uh, and I wouldn't be bullish on Mrs. Likewin as well. So again, lower time frames, maybe a little bit of a pullback. And what's up? Uh, What's up, John? Good to meet you, ma'am. Uh, lower, lower time frames, maybe a little bit of a pullback, and, but higher time frames still remain bullish. Um, and I'd say, you know, a pullback from a from a daily perspective, maybe like ninety-seven dollars, ninety-six or, or ninety-six dollars, something like that. Um, as long as it maintains that, I think that's going to likely be bought. But looking at the four-hour, this looks fine. This is constructive. It wants to move higher, so perhaps this is a pullback right here. You know, I, I do think that is certainly possible. That we can make it all the way down to 100 first, though, um, on the very low time frame. So always have to separate the low time frames from the medium time frame from, from the high and the macro time frames. You know, realistically, I don't really want to be focusing too much on the lower time frames because, uh, you know, by the time I post these videos, usually those moves have either played out or are like 
you know, are, are pretty much or are mostly played out. Um, so it's probably not all that helpful. But uh, higher time frames look fine. Four hour looks constructive. We got four hour Stokes. Actually, mm, going to be getting weaker here. So fair enough. Um, yeah, I, I guess I could say you know if we break if we break down below like ninety or sorry about a uh, hundred dollars and yes I do think that we see that ninety five ninety six dollar tick then we'll kind of take it from there. You know, m maybe we're putting in another high right here and we come all the way back down towards uh, ninety one and a half. But still, even with even if that did happen, that would still be overall bullish. It's just you know it'd give you another. It just would suggest that we're going to spend some more time going sideways, right? Um, looking at uh, let's look at the let's look at the weekly for a sec. Sorry, I'm actually dealing with a different keyboard here too, which is not fucking good. Uh, I really dislike this one. Uh, overall, you know, to me, weekly looks fine. We as long as the weekly closes anywhere anywhere here or higher, I'm going to be very very bullish on. I shouldn't say very very bullish on this like one, but I'd be looking for a next move towards like 115 to 125 region. Um, overall, you know, from a higher time frame perspective, probably probably with you know more of an emphasis on the 125 region. Sorry, like the upper the upper side of that region. Um, so yeah, you know, it's again lower time frames look fine to me. Or sorry, medium to medium to high time frames look look fine to good to me. Lower time frames, a mm, little bit of issues here. Uh, two hour, well, two hour looks okay as well. You know, a little bit of bearish divergence there. So yeah, I mean, two hour bearish divergence eh, could get a little bit more nasty, maybe down to ninety seven and a half bucks. But you know, I want to be very clear and say this: it's not that like I'm it's not like that. I'm looking for this to break to the downside, just maybe a pullback um, until we actually violate some critical levels, which is going to be more important to just look at Bitcoin to begin with. You know, if Bitcoin shows some 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 major weaknesses, then yes, then 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 it's time to get bearish and everything. But for right now, not so much. Um, yeah, as as long as long as Mrs. Litecoin uh, maintains from like a long like a long term perspective above sixty six and a half dollars, everything's fine. Uh, from a from a shorter term perspective, about eighty seven and eighty seven and a quarter is the magic number. If that area gets lost, then we probably move down to like seventy six and a half. Uh, but for right now, you know. Not not too big of an issue. Let's go check out traditional markets for a second. I am curious where they closed out the week. A little bit of an upwards close, uh, but you know, as a little bit of an up close. But I don't consider this a good close for traditional markets. Uh, let's go to the weekly. Uh, weekly did not break the 21, so I can't get too bearish off that. But if we do open this next week, if, if we see on Monday, a, or sorry, not Monday, but Tuesday, a gap down open, if we if we even just open below the low of this prior week at 280 and a half, uh, I'm gonna get pretty damn bearish for a move down to the mid 270s, about 275, 276. But uh, for me, the most important thing right now is the monthly. Does the monthly close like this? If it closes like this, I'm bearish. If it closes, um, if it closes like above 285, I'd be neutral-ish, um, but uh, yeah, if, if it closed below like 284 or any or, or anywhere here or lower, I'd be bearish for move back down to uh, about 269, 270 region. Um, again, I'd still be waiting on this one. We would have major bearish divergence on the monthly uh, RSI if that did happen, and this would also look like a a pretty nasty hunt as well, which would imply a counter trend movement uh, likely occurring. Um, soon, you know, swing pattern failure essentially. So yeah, again, uh, I'd still be waiting on that because that's going to be like the obvious signal uh, daily over here. Not too much to be gained off this. Mm, I don't like being short in these areas, but it does look like it wants to break down and, and come down to the 270, uh, 277 region to me. Um, you know, I, 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 even like I said, even if I just see the low of last week taken out, I'd immediately get bearish. Um, for that, for that move into the mid 270s, and uh, that's probably not going to be good for Bitcoin, especially these two are correlated, which is what our correlation coefficient does show. In fact, we can put it on for a second here. I've been showing this recently, just because I think it's quite interesting. Um, co e, wait, how do you spell that? E f God damn it! Where is it, Bali Poor? There it is. There's the man. Um, put this on right here. Put this on a weekly. So basically, we're comparing th this bottom indicator here is comparing the the correlation between the price of what we're looking at right here on spies and on Bitcoin on Bitstamp. You can see on the weekly that we are pretty we're, we're more correlated uh, more often than we are not. In fact, very rarely do we get a negative correlation. And so right now, you know, we're not like we're not like like a, like at a one read, but we are pretty damn high for a correlation indicator. Um, I think anything above like a 0.5 read is is significant. I think that more concern people would even say you know or sorry more more aggressive people would say even lower than that um, and the fact is that if spies put in a top here well Bitcoin's likely to have some problems if they are correlated so 
All right, be careful with that. Take that off for right now. Um, let's go check out the other top shit coins. What are they doing, baby? What are they doing? Uh, Cardano. Again, I haven't said anything new about this thing in you know in about a week. I do think that based off of last week's close, we probably are trying to put in a low here. Uh, that would be my first read on this one. Uh, daily looks droopy. Daily looks bad. I'm not gonna, you know, to be to be quite honest. I mean, this this does not look good here. But it, but the weekly is what I'm going off of. As long as long as the weekly closes above 1,000 satoshis, I'd be okay with it. If it closes if it closes at or below 1,000 satoshis, I would not. I would be bearish off it most likely. But uh, that also does kind of make me think that we get a move between now and uh, tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern time when the when the weekly closes. Uh, looking at very low time frames, yep, do you think that it probably does try to move back up here towards uh, 1050, maybe even 1100, um, and then higher time frames, like I said, trying to put in the low here. Uh, BMB cone, one of the strongest ones in the market, and finally showing a little bit of weakness here on the lower time frames. We do see some bearish divergence, so I do think that we come back down and test like 32 and a half bucks. Um, not a crazy call right there, though. Uh, but overall, daily's fine, man. D uh, daily says that that's going to be a buy if it does get back down below 33 bucks. Um, daily, daily had a very good close yesterday and does look like it wants more. I mean, this one looks like it wants to wants to charge more. I think I do have a measure move pointing us towards like 38 dollars, maybe something like that. I, I guess I don't have it on right here, but I do remember saying that somewhere. So I do think that, uh, tentatively speaking, probably, probably, probably would still be looking at something like that. Uh, weekly looks fine. Weekly looks really, really good. Uh, weekly uh, higher time frames look very good. They look like they want continuation. Lower time frames a little bit of a pullback, kind of similar to what I'm seeing on Bitcoin. Uh, Zcash, um, yeah, uh, definitely on the weaker side. Looks like it wants to come back down and test like 70 and a quarter. Um, but again, going to do what the rest of the market does. And uh, from a weekly perspective, I do think that this is, you know, more more good going on here than bad, and probably probably does try to put in a low here. Um, probably does rally off this area and, and ultimately hit back towards $79. Uh, Bcash, um, overall good. Uh, not, not, not my favorite chart, in the, I mean, like not, not the most clean chart in the world, but uh, does look in the way that uh, Bcash does things uh, bullish. We do have the golden cross going on right here. We are above all major movement averages. That's, that's, my, key, that's my cue to not be bearish. That's my cue to be built bullish. We do see weekly resistance right around the $500 region. So I would say that that is a tentative target if we do get the whole market breaking up uh, four hours. You know, again, we do see an obvious rising trend line along this uh, say 89. So uh, if we did have a if we did have a major pullback, we would be looking somewhere right around there. Uh, Tron Cash, what's he doing? Uh, working his way up. I do think that this one does try higher, uh, probably back towards the what is this two spot nine region. Um, yeah, daily's okay. Yeah, it kind of makes me think that the rest of market, you know, m most of the market's looking something like this. Same thing with with weekly. We do see an overall bottoming formation here. So uh, so I do think that Tron's kind of you know putting in, put in like major lows overall but you're gonna take its time right um going back to the daily for a second yeah probably looks fine i mean got the golden cross above above the 21 you know you, you know my rule uh neo cash what do we got on neo mm, looks uh, on the weaker side kind of like zcash uh if we do have a little bit of a down i'd be looking for a move back down to 11 dollars but probably follows the rest of the market probably does try another run at uh, 1270 um so yeah, lower time frames a little bit bearish, higher time frames looking like it's trying to put in a low and probably does work its way higher towards uh, fifteen and a half dollars over time. But that's you know that's a weekly. It's going to take a long time. EOS uh, give you a beautiful chance to rebuy right around the weekly eighty nine, um, and I do think that uh, this thing pro you know looks bullish to me. This 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 is a flag right here, and we can make a nice little measure move based off this. Oh, I guess I've already done it. Uh, let's let's go back and zoom out. Where's this measure move pointing towards? It is pointing towards seven and a quarter, so I do like that target. And overall, this this one looks bullish to me. If this thing came back down to uh, six and a quarter. I'd be a buyer there, but uh, to me, it's it's grinding the resistance right now. We do see daily stokes about to cross. Ooh, they are across the upside, but uh, they're weak right now. Um, but a long day to go, and uh, to me, this is this is more bullish than not. As long as we maintain the uh, ten simple at uh, six and a quarter, if we do break back down below uh, five eighty five, then yes, I would be more bearish on this for a move all the way down here into this region, like low fives. But uh, I think that that's less likely to happen right now. Uh, Ripple Cash, what's we doing? What are we doing, Mr. Ripple's Cash? Uh, a lot of people have been talking about a golden cross on this. There's no golden cross on this, like anywhere near. Um, I don't know where people are getting that from. Um, again, it, a little bit more of a sloppy chart, certainly a sloppy chart. Um, what I can say from a longer term perspective 
I do think that this was a buy when it came back down to 36 and a half cent and I do think that it's trying to put in lows here but uh, if we do close below 36 and a half cent this thing's going to come all the way back down all the way back down to that 29 and a half cent region um, for right now though I tentatively say it's trying you know as long as it holds this area 36 and a half cent I'm I'm, ten I'm I'm like cautiously bullish on it again it's going to go with the rest of the market trying to consolidate above a major moving average sorry you know you know major supports which is generally a good thing so I do think that it probably does try higher um, from here, probably back up to you know 42 cents and then you know 51 cents over time. Um, and narrow cash, what's he doing? Mm, again, another, another example of, of a relatively stronger one. Uh, got the golden cross right over here above the 21. You know, you know my rule. Uh, resistance right around 89 and a half. If we can actually break 89 and a half, then yes, I do think much higher actually towards 115. Um, and it's going to depend on the weekly close. I don't feel too confident calling things in the lower time frames on something like this uh, when the weekly is like, you know, just going to, going to be closing tomorrow. We do see, yeah, we do see four hours constructive. If the four hour did dip back down to uh, 80, you know, $83, probably be a buy, but uh, I do think that it, it probably, probably takes the upper road first, probably towards $92. Um, having a hard time reading this one on, on the four hour. I'm not really getting too much out of it. Yeah, the hourly is coming back down to support. Do you want to see it bounce here? Yeah. All right, let's go back on to Mr. Bitcoin. What's he doing? Back down to 79.80. So yes, we are taking the south road first. And as we spoke about before, there is a little bit of a measure move on this formation, I think down to the 7,900-ish level. So I do think that we get that move to 7,900. And then we'll see if we bounce there. Uh, if, the if the bounce is good and takes us back above uh, 8,000, then I would get bullish for a move back up to 8150 8, in the more immediate time frame. So that's, that's kind of kind of how to play the low time frames right now. Do you think that we, I do think that we come back down here though. Um, I'd only see like a bigger short trade if we do break below 70. What, what was the daily area? If we break below like seven, mm, that's that's too far. What about the 12 hour? Yeah, 12 hours says we, we have some we have some decent downside if we break below about 7,800. Um, but again, I'd still I'd still be playing the overall formation. I don't really think that it's too appropriate to be playing uh, lower time frames right now when the higher time frames are about to give you about a thousand dollar trade. Uh, four hour support somewhere down here, like again 7900. Yeah, so I do see do see a few things coming in that region. Um, but overall, you know, I don't think I don't think the money to be made on the lower time frames right now. The ranges are tightening, and uh, it's a high. And it's been because we are getting so fucking close to this uh, thing being full, it becomes extremely likely to break. So that's the next big trade for me. Anyways, anywhere below, uh, I just kind of wrap that up. Anywhere below about 70, 7200 on the CMEs, and yes, I'd be bearish for a move down into the low six thousands. If you want to be more conservative, I'd say sixty nine fifty would be the actionable trigger. But I'd be making decisions at seventy one fifty to seventy two hundred. Uh, for the upside, I would be looking to add a move, uh, tw a 10 hour, 12 hour uh, dildo close above um, 8,200, and I'm bullish for a move uh, much higher, about a thousand bucks higher. Um, maybe four hour dildo close above uh, 8,300 would be a little bit more conservative, a little bit more appropriate. But for right now, you know, it's, it's a holiday weekend. Uh, lower time frames probably do pop back down to 7,900, and we'll kind of figure it out from there. But uh, that's all I got for right now. I'll be back on tomorrow with some more video action. Uh, looking forward to seeing you there, and take care.